Hello, this is Dr. Stanley Kim, the hematology oncologist in Claremont, California. For the past 15 years, we have witnessed tremendous progress in the uh, field of lung cancer. Thanks to the smoking cessation efforts, the incidence has been decreasing. And thanks to the new emerging treatments, the mortality rate has been decreasing as well. Because the lung cancer is such a big subject uh, with so much new information, we will discuss it in a two separate sections. In the part one, we will review the uh, most updated comprehensive information. And in part two, uh, the newly developed treatments. Thank you for watching. Lung cancer is the second most common cancer and the leading cause of cancer death. Fortunately, the incidence and the mortality rates have been decreasing. Cigarette smoking is the primary risk factor accounting for 90% of all lung cancer. And the pest radiation therapy to the chest as a treatment of breast cancer or lymphoma is also the risk factor. Dietary vitamins or antioxidant therapy didn't show clear evidence of reducing lung cancer risk. In fact, alpha tocopherol, which is vitamin E, and the beta carotene, a vitamin A precursor, increase the cancer, uh, lung cancer risk. For screening, chest x-ray and the sputum cytology every six months for three years for high-risk patients didn't help in reducing lung cancer death rate. But low-dose CT scan of the lung in patient in people aged 55 to 77 years with a, at least a 30-year pack year uh, smoking history reduced the lung cancer death rate. It includes those who quit smoking in the past 15 years. So Medicare and Medicaid, Medicare cover the screening low-dose CT scan. This picture shows the uh, low dose of CT scan detecting a small lung cancer. There are two major pathology types of lung cancer, more commonly non-small cell lung cancer and the small cell lung cancer. Among non-small cell lung cancer, adenocarcinoma is the most common, occurring in both smokers and non-smokers and commonly in uh, women. Mostly uh, they are invasive adenocarcinoma, but adenocarcinoma in situ is a non-invasive cancer previously called the bronchoalveolar carcinoma with a smaller size, three centimeter or less with a lipidic growth pattern. Lipidic growth pattern means the cancer cells grow inside the alveoli against the alveoli wall. It has a good prognosis with the surgery. Minimally invasive adenocarcinoma has a minimal invasion, five centimeter or less. Squamous cell carcinoma occurs in the uh, smokers and the large cell carcinoma uh, is also uh, one of the major lung cancer. A subtype, uh, large cell Neuroendocrine carcinoma is a uh, aggressive tumor. Rarely, we can see carcinoid tumor, adenosquamous cell carcinoma, or sarcomatoid cancer. The small cell lung cancer are more common in smokers, considered as a systemic disease, and is very aggressive. Please look at the CT scan of adenocarcinoma. Usually occurs in the periphery of the lung. Squamous cell carcinoma occurs more in the central site. Small cell carcinoma, definitely in the central site, and very aggressive. Cough is the most common symptoms of lung cancer, but patients can develop hemoptysis, short of breath, or chest pain. Hoarseness is due to recurrent laryngeal nerve involvement by the tumor, which is a T4 lesions. Malignant pleural fusion is stage four disease, but don't be panicked. Not all the uh, uh, pleural effusions are malignant. About 10% of them are benign. So it's very important to distinguish those benign from malignant effusion because the treatment is different and prognosis is a lot different. Superior vena cava syndrome is more common in small cell lung cancer than non-small cell lung cancer. Pancos tumor, which is also called superior sulcus tumor, is mostly due to squamous cell carcinoma arising in the superior sulcus in the apex of the lung as shown in this uh, chest x-ray. Mostly patients have a pain in the shoulder. Some of them develop Horner syndrome due to a sympathetic nerve blockage by the tumor. The symptoms triad, ptosis, eyelid drooping, meiosis, decreased pupils, and the anhydrosis, 
decreased sweating as shown in this uh, picture. The lung cancer commonly metastasize to the liver, bone, adrenal glands, and the brain. With a liver metastasis, you can expect abnormal liver function test, pain in the right upper quadrant, and the enlarged liver. The signs of bone metastasis are pain of the bone, elevated alkaline phosphatase. Osteolytic lesions are more common than osteoblastic ones. Adrenal gland metastases are mostly asymptomatic. When you see a tumor in the adrenal gland in lung cancer patients, don't be panicked. Only about 25% of them uh, turn out to be metastatic. PET CT or MRI is more useful in distinguishing benign from a uh, malignant tumor. With a brain metastasis, many of them are asymptomatic, but they can develop headache, nausea, vomiting, blurring of vision, or focal neurological symptoms, and a seizure. It's most commonly occur in the small cell lung cancer. In fact, 20 to 30% of small cell lung cancer patients have a brain metastasis at presentation. Among non-small cell lung cancer, adenocarcinoma is more common than squamous carcinoma. Please look at these pictures. The CT, uh, no, this uh, PET CT show the uh, liver metastasis right here. This is bone scan showing multiple areas of bone metastasis. And this is adrenal glands metastasis. The brain metastasis after stereotactic radiotherapy, it's gone. Paraneoplastic syndrome is caused by cytokines and hormones produced by the cancer cells. Hypocalcemia is most commonly occurs in small cell lung cancer, but it may be due to bone metastasis as well. SIADH syndrome occurs mostly in small cell lung cancer by ectopic production of ADH causing hyponatremia. Lambert-Eaton myasthenia syndrome occurs in 3% of small cell lung cancer also. Characteristically, patients develop weakness of the proximal muscles of the leg, but the ptosis is less common. The ptosis, the most common signs of classic myasthenia gravis. Cushing syndrome is caused by ectopic production of ACTH by small cell lung cancer, or less commonly, carcinoid tumor. Patients develop hirsutism, hypertension, and diabetes, but patients develop weight loss rather than weight gain of classical Cushing syndrome. Hypertrophic osteoarthropathy is more common in adenocarcinoma. Patients develop clubbing of fingers. Leukemoid reaction is the white blood cell counts rising over 50,000 per microliter. More common in the non-small cell lung cancer, it's a poor prognostic sign. Hypercoagulability states can result in DVTs, thrombotic microangiopathy, or Trozo syndrome, which is a migratory superficial thrombophlebitis, is more common in adenocarcinoma. Dermatomyositis or polymyositis are rare perineoplastic syndrome. For initial evaluation when you suspect lung cancer, a good history and physical is very important, which provides information about the location or extent of the disease. And you order the lab test, including CBC, CMP, and the urinalysis. High alkaline phosphatase may be due to liver or bone metastasis. Then GGT, galpa A, gamma glutamyl transferase, may help to distinguish liver or liver from uh, bone metastasis. Tumor markers such as CEA is not routinely ordered because it neither helps to diagnose nor predicts prognosis in early stages. But it may be useful to assess the response to treatment if elevated before treatments. And you order the chest x-ray, CT scan of the chest, including liver and adrenal glands, of course with the uh, contrast. PET CT may upstage the disease and prevent unnecessary surgery because it may detect the uh, metastatic disease, especially in the uh, uh, mediastinum. MRI scan of the brain with contrast may detect asymptomatic brain metastasis, but you don't have to order it when the patient is a very early stage, like stage 1A. To confirm lung cancer, we need to have a tissue diagnosis. Simply sputum cytology may detect the lung cancer cells but often the amount of specimens not adequate for special studies. 
when the patients have a malignant pleural effusion, then thoracentesis can detect the uh, cancer cells. Conventional flexible bronchoscopy and biopsy with the brushing and washing is less invasive but may have a higher false negative rate, but it's good for the central lesions. In order to locate the uh, uh, target uh, tumor, uh, endobronchial ultrasound guided transbronchial biopsy is used. It's not available in every hospital. It gives very high uh, sensitivity because ultrasound will pinpoint the exact location of the tumor. Another technology is that electromagnetic navigational bronchoscopy. As shown in this picture, it's like a Google map. You know the, your current location and the, you navigate to the uh, uh, nearby Starbucks. And by watching those target lesions in the screen, the pulmonologist navigate uh, to the uh, target lesions for the biopsy. But more commonly, we do the uh, transthoracic CT-guided needle uh, aspiration biopsy. By watching the uh, CT scan, you, pin, uh, you uh, uh, introduce the needles, biopsy needles. Mediastinal lymph node biopsy is very important because metastasis to the mediastinal lymph nodes means surgically not resectable case. So it's indicated almost all lung cancer patients who are surgical candidate. We have to make sure the cancer has not spread to the mediastinal lymph node before surgery. There are several methods, cervical mediastinoscopy, video assisted mediastinoscopy, and uh, uh, mediastinos mediastinotomy. The video assisted mediastinoscopic lymph adenectomy it's more uh, uh, commonly done because you see those uh, uh, the location of the tumors. It's like a laparoscopic procedures. I like to mention that complete mediastinal lymph node dissection is not necessary. Just the systematic mediastinal lymph node sampling is enough. In 2017, new eighth edition was introduced for staging of lung cancer. The T1 tumor means the size up to 3 cm, T2 3 to 5 cm, T3 5 to 7 cm, and T4 over 7 cm. If patients have another tumor in the same lobe of the same side of the lung, it's a T3. Tumor invading the chest wall or fretting nerves or superior sulcus pancreas tumor belong to T3 lesions. When the tumor involves the recurrent laryngeal nerves or another tumor in the different lobe of the same side of the lung is T4 tumors. Lymph node metastasis is categorized to N1, 2, and 3. In N1 metastasis, the tumor is spread to the same side hyalur or peribronchial lymph nodes, N2 to the same side mediastinal lymph nodes, and three, the other side of hyalur or mediastinal lymph nodes, or same side supraclavical lymph nodes. M categorized to M1A, B, C. M1 means malignant pleural or pericardial effusion, or tumor in, the, in another lung. M1B, single metas, uh, distant metastasis. M1C, multiple distant metastasis. Now the stage 1, the tumor is very small, up to 3 cm. Stage 2A and B, in stage 2A, tumor is slightly bigger without lymph node metastasis. Stage 2B, uh, tumor uh, can invade to the uh, peribronchial or hyaline lymph nodes on the same side. Stage 3A, B, C. Stage 3A means tumor is uh, uh, bigger with the uh, mediastinal lymph nodes or very large with the uh, uh, peribronchial or hyalur lymph node metastasis. Stage 3b means tumor is uh, pretty much uh, involved to the uh, mediastinum and the tumor size is uh, bigger. Stage 3b, big tumor with the uh, involvement to the other side of mediastinal lymph nodes or same side of supraclavical lymph nodes. Stage one, uh, 4a and b, stage 4a means tumor uh, in the other lung or malignant pleural effusion or single 
distant metastasis stage, or 4B means multiple metastasis. Small cell lung cancer have different staging systems. Limited stage or extensive stage. In limited stage, tumor is only one side of the lung, which can be treated with a single radiation field. Extensive stage tumor has spread throughout the lung and cannot be treated with a single radiation field or distant metastasis. I will briefly mention about the uh, surgical uh, resection. Wedge resection, segmentectomy, lobectomy, or pneumonectomy. And the video assisted thoracic surgery or open thoracotomy, robotic assisted thoracic surgery. As I mentioned in the introduction, newly developed targeted therapy and the immunotherapy make the personalized medicine possible. I will discuss these subjects more in detail in the part two. Let's meet it, uh, lung cancer part two. Thank you for watching.